Sonic Adventure 2, my personal favorite game in the entire Sonic franchise. But why? Because it managed to take Sonic's 2D formula and expand upon it. It was fantastic. It gave you an opportunity to play as either the heroes, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, or you could play as the villains, Shadow, Eggman, and the Bat Hedgehog thing. I don't know. Many parts of the game were very tedious, but it was also incredibly rewarding for what it was. Also, Chow Gardens. This game was great. Well, except for the mech levels. Sonic Adventure 2 was released in 2001, and in my opinion, it was the last truly great Sonic console game. Over the next several years, we got Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Sonic and the Black Knight, Sonic 06, and so many other atrocities. It seemed like the blue blur would never get another hit ever again. That was until Sonic Colors was released for the Wii in 2010. It was fast, exciting, simple, and great to look at. Sonic Colors was awesome. When it came out, it seemed that Sonic Team had finally recovered from their nine years of mediocre and downright awful games. Their newfound momentum carried into 2011 with the release of Sonic Generations. This was the 20th anniversary of Sonic and they really didn't want to mess it up. When the trailers came out, it looked great. When the game came out, it surpassed people's expectations. Sonic Generations was extremely successful, 1.6 million copies sold in just two months. This game is great. Everyone loves this game, especially this guy. Hey, hey, yeah, you like, you like Sonic? Oh, no! The story is as follows. Sonic is celebrating his birthday when a dark cloud comes in and kidnaps everyone except for Sonic. You know, the one guy who can save the world. I love this. It's so simple, and it's something Sonic games neglect all the time. With every new iteration of Sonic, it seems they try to start over. The problem with starting over so many times is that the ideas for these reimaginings are awful. Like, like this, and this. No one remembers Sonic Unleashed as the game with great overworld sections and amazing music because the idea of Sonic turning into a friggin' werewolf is just stupid. Many people can't take this and frankly, neither can I. This is precisely why I think Sonic Boom will fail. I mean, not a lot of people can take this seriously. Just, just look at it. Anyway. Sonic finds himself in a colorless world where he has to complete levels to restore each area. However, little does Sonic know, a Sonic from the past experiences a similar thing. He himself eventually ends up in the white space as well. From here, the story dulls out. The rest of the story is kind of awful, to be honest. The writing sucks and the voice acting is terrible, but I, I really don't care. And I don't think anyone else does either. Anyway, Sonic and Classic Sonic have to complete nine levels with two acts in each, one for Modern Sonic and one for Classic Sonic. Completing one of these levels will restore color and life to the area with Sonic freeing one of his friends in the process. And with each new friend that is freed, the dialogue gets cringier and cringier. Thanks, Big Blue. That's the first time I've ever been stolen. It's good to have my sanctuary back! Thanks for saving me, Sonic. It was scary in the dark, but I tried to be brave. There isn't one level that I actually hate. I'm serious. There are some that I don't care for, like Planet Wisp and Seaside Hill. But other than those, I'm very satisfied with the areas. Each area is inspired by past Sonic games, including the original Sonic Adventure 1 and 2, and even a level inspired by Sonic 06. I love how this game isn't just a celebration of Sonic's best from the past 20 years, but rather a celebration of Sonic's history as a whole. This game fascinates me to a large degree. I mean, how could a game that looks so unoriginal be so amazing? Well, because it actually is original and it's done really well. The level design here is outstanding, while the level design in, say, Sonic 06 is crap. Generations is not meant to be sped through, it has a much bigger focus on platforming than its predecessors. There's a lot of waiting around in between obstacles. The levels play out very well too. Both Sonics control exactly how they do in their other games. 2D Sonic controls just as he did in Sonic 3 and it feels great. How this managed to get 2D Sonic so perfectly while Sonic 4 couldn't? I have no idea. 3D Sonic has a few problems however. First off, the camera. The camera has been a major problem in almost every 3D Sonic game I've ever played. Like here. I experienced several glitches as 3D Sonic, such as me getting stuck in this platform. Luckily, I can just spam boost until it lets me out. I also kind of wish that hitting a wall actually felt like you were hitting a wall at top speed. 
Here, Sonic goes 60 to 0 in one second. Many people don't like 3D Sonic's boost ability as it cheapens the gameplay. As I can see where they're coming from, boost is just so much fun to use that I really don't have a problem with it. I would say that if you don't like it, don't use it, but there are certain parts of the game where you need boost to run on water. Overall, these problems were not too prevalent, but I would still call them problems. Outside of these core levels, there are several boss fights and challenges. The boss fights are done exceptionally well. My favorite one was probably Shadows. It starts out good, and then when you're on the offense, BAM! Live and Learn starts playing in the background. The other boss fights are pretty great too, with a not terrible fight with Silver. Some of the boss fighting mechanics can get a bit annoying after a while, and this is especially prevalent in the final boss fight, which is also awesome in its own right. Most bosses don't put up much of a fight though, and some of them aren't even fights at all, they're pretty much just normal platforming levels with a bit of a twist. That's not to say I didn't enjoy them though, uh, but I would have preferred a stronger emphasis on the boss fights, especially the story based ones. After completing the three levels in a zone, you unlock several challenges based in each level. You will need to complete at least one of them from each level to progress to the next zone. Some of these extra challenges can range from racing a doppelganger to fighting Espio. Some are easy and some of them are hard, like the Vector of the Crocodile challenge where you have to do your homing attack on this note as he bounces it back to you. After completing the challenges needed, you will get a boss fight, and then, after you beat it, you will move on to the next zone in the game. Unfortunately, there are only three zones in the game, which totals up to only nine levels in both 3D and 2D Sonic, but each level has tons of replayability. This game also looks incredible, putting an HD look to classic Sonic levels and making them look incredible. While the graphics are really good, the sound design is just good. Many songs from previous Sonic games make a return, such as Live and Learn and the City Escape song. Other than that, Sonic Generations has no real original music that stands out. This is the Sonic we need to see more of. Less of this, and more of this. Less of this, and more of this. Also, as a side note, the 3DS version of this game sucks. It is nothing like the one on the console as the levels are only 2D. I would pass this version entirely, even if you are a massive Sonic fan. Sonic Generations has simply become my new favorite Sonic game. It has some of the best 2D levels that the series has ever seen, along with some of the best 3D levels that the series has ever seen. It has a bigger focus on platforming, which is a good thing in my book, and it has tons of replayability, with the ability to go in and set new high scores anytime you want. I'm not going to have a typical rating system for these types of games. It's going to be more focused on the most important decision you make in buying a game. The price. So how much is Sonic Generations worth? Well, on Amazon right now, it's about $16.99, and I'd say that's a good price. So please just go play this game. Please, please just do it. And Sonic Team, if you're watching, more of this, and less of this. Oh. Oh, sorry, you dropped your keys. Thanks. Good. That was really hard.